In this video, I've got five easy beauty and lifestyle, sustainable and budget-friendly ways to stretch your dollar. In a previous video, I talked about five ways you can stretch your makeup and skincare budget. And this is gonna focus a little bit more on all the other things you can do. As you might already know, I have been an international makeup artist working for over 20 years with a focus for over 10 years on green beauty. And green beauty really looks at what are the ingredients you're putting on your skin? Are they harmful to you? And is it harmful to the environment or to animals? Is there an ethical component to it? So this video is really about focusing on the triad that is about eco-friendly practices, which is reduce, reuse, and recycle. We're gonna be focusing on reducing and reusing. In addition to my career that's been focused on these green beauty and healthy beauty practices, I also grew up in such a way that we were very budget-minded in my household for a very long time. My mom became a single mom after her divorce from my biological father when she was 22. And I specifically remember living in the upstairs of a converted garage in a really nice neighborhood because my mom wanted me to be able to attend a great public school. And I remember her sleeping on the couch and me sleeping on this little twin bed and we had curtains that were made out of bed sheets so that they coordinated that I'm sure she got on sale at Target like everything else. And one of my comfort foods that I will still often go to is plain pasta with ketchup because that is what my mother could afford. She told me that often she would be at the grocery store deciding between whether or not to purchase milk or butter. I just felt like sharing a little bit of that insight because it adds to that connection that many of us have personally that can even be embarrassing in our lives when we've really had to, you know, tighten the hatches and make every dollar and every penny count. And at the time of filming this video, we're dealing with the coronavirus, the stay at home self quarantine mandates, which are precluding a lot of people from earning a living. And so with that spirit, I wanted to share some things that will really hopefully help you be economical. And also you will be making a wonderful difference for the planet because you won't be adding in so much to the landfill or burden in terms of consumption. Tip number one is how to maximize your hair color, especially if you're trying to cover gray. This is something I've been doing for years and I highly suggest that if you're looking to cover your gray and you don't have to do it completely, that you have hair color that is painted in almost like highlights and lowlights into your hair. And the technique that that's specifically called is balayage. I've written about it on my site. I even have a little video with my favorite eco-friendly hairstylist here in Oregon. And by having the hair color painted in, in various points around the head and not having a stripe at the root line, you're actually extending the life of your hair color for a couple reasons. One is you don't have that line of demarcation at your part that's so super obvious you try to cover gray. And the other is that that sort of light silver color of the gray hair as it comes in can be woven into lighter bits that are painted into the hair. So they kind of just are part of the effect of the lightning around the hair. And it's not so much of a contrast of trying to do dark and then you have gray roots. And since I've been in quarantine, my hair has grown so much short hair. I mean, in two weeks, it's a completely different hairstyle. I'm getting like the full Carol Brady mullet going on. And all of a sudden I'm realizing how many gray hairs I actually have. So thank goodness that in the way that I've been having my hair colored, it's not gonna be so terrible as I was describing, like with that line of demarcation as it grows out. Yes, the grays will become more noticeable, but this definitely saves a lot of money because I don't have to go to the hairstylist every three to six weeks. I can go to her every eight weeks, every 10 weeks to get a touch up on my hair. And usually balayage partials are a lot less expensive than full hair color with highlights or lowlights also included. The next few tips are about disposables. And so tip number two specifically focuses on makeup wipes. I personally despise makeup wipes. I think they're a last resort and here's why. Most of them are not compostable, so you're just throwing the wipe away into the landfill, which is not eco-friendly. A lot of them are made with ingredients that I really don't think should be on your skin. 
Now there are more natural ones, of course, and those are fine, but a lot of people are just using the makeup wipes to take their makeup off and then they're not properly cleansing their skin afterwards. The makeup wipes were not meant to replace a traditional cleansing practice. They are meant to just first remove the makeup so that you can continue the rest of the steps more easily. What is the original makeup wipe? It's a washcloth. This is an organic, beautiful cotton washcloth and you can do so much wonderful good to your skin. You can lightly exfoliate with it, you can soften the skin before you do your cleanser and really get the benefit from your cleanser by leaving it on and letting the warm water steep in. Talk about some really specific ways to do that and natural foods you can do that within one of my courses about dry skin that I filmed with a master esthetician. So. You may know that I have courses online on makeup and skincare and they're really valuable. They teach you a lot of hacks, but this is definitely one of them. And off Etsy, I ordered reusable cotton pads. So these super cute little patterned um, terry cloth pads, they launder pretty easily. I take my mascara and my makeup off. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of staining and you could bleach them if you know you really wanted to. But I find that a lot of times just a bit of OxyClean will do the job. Um, and there's more natural versions of OxyClean that I actually prefer. But I think everybody kind of knows that as a household name. So this is a great replacement for having to buy disposables and fill up the landfill. And also there's an entire discussion around using non-organic cotton things like pads and whatnot and how much pesticide that puts onto the planet. So this is greatly reducing that burden. Tip number three is about the Q-tip. Now you may know these as cotton swabs also. And I learned this particular tip from Doris Roberts, who is an American actress who was on Everybody Loves Raymond. And I spent 10 days on a film production, traveling around with her doing her makeup and hair. And I was blown away when she showed me this. So I wanna show it to you too. So there's always extra fluff on the cotton swab and you can use it once as you will to like sort of adjust makeup or whatever. Now I wouldn't necessarily do this trick for your earwax, but this is a great one for makeup. There's generally a little bit of extra cotton on the Q-tip. So you can wipe some, you know, smudgy stuff away, perfect your makeup, and then slowly pull off some of the fluff where you would have the dirty residue from what you just did, and then pull it back over and you can flatten it down with your fingers. If you wanna get a little unsanitary about it, I have to say she did use a little spit to get it down, but you can press it down with your fingers and then you can reuse that section. And I've used a cotton swab like this up to four times, just this one end. So instead of this becoming a one use disposable product, this has the potential of being used eight times before it's thrown away. Now, of course, there's other options than cotton swabs to use, but if you need to use one, I hope that you will try to maximize the use of it before you throw it away. Tip number four involves TP and tissue. And there's a reason that people started hoarding this when they found out that they were gonna be in their houses for a really long time. It's because most people use so much of both of these items. And I'm gonna confess that I've often thought about writing how I use so little tissue and toilet paper, not only in my household, but as a professional makeup artist, because you need tissues oftentimes. But I was kind of embarrassed thinking, well, if I put that out there, people don't think I'm some sort of freak, but I feel like now is the time to dish up this tip. I don't know if you've seen The Office, but there's an episode where Dwight, who then owns the building, is trying to save on money. And so he has Moe's create this spindle and he's pulling apart the two ply toilet paper and re-rolling it as one ply and putting it in the bathrooms and everyone's complaining. That's not what this tip is about, okay? This is really about being mindful about how much tissue paper you really need to do your business. I find that I only need two squares for number one. And let me explain something to you. You do not need a giant wad for what you're really trying to do, which is absorb the extra. All right, I know this tip just got a little weird, but here's how it's gonna get even weirder. I don't even know if I should say this. I'm confessing that if my nose is running just a little bit or I need to blow it, I will 
fold it in half, blow my nose, fold it in half again and again, and then I use the side that doesn't have any moisture on it, and that's what I will use. So I double use two squares of tissue in one moment. I know it's a little extreme. I cannot even believe I'm telling you this on video. I cannot wait to hear what you have to say in the comments about this. Um, I understand this tip is not for everyone, but I challenge you. Two squares. Be like Elaine in Seinfeld. How many more pop culture references from long ago can I make here? Spare a square. See if you can reduce it to just two for doing number one. Now, number two is a different story. You're on your own there. <laughs> I'm not giving you any tips. And when it comes to tissue, the same thing applies. You know, you don't just have to blow your nose into one tissue and goodbye. You can reuse that tissue in multiple places if you're thinking about it and you're folding correctly. Also, remember I was talking about how you don't always need a cotton swab to fix up your makeup or whatever you might have been using it for? You can wrap a tissue around your finger creating a little bit of a point and then wipe different areas. And you always want to be really careful and delicate with your skin. So don't just go tearing at it because these are paper products. So no matter how soft they are, they do have some fiber that could just piss off your skin, frankly. Here we are at tip number five. But before I dish that one, just wanted to remind you that there's an awesome video that I mentioned at the beginning of this that covers how to maximize your makeup and skincare budget. So be sure to watch that too. And I'm super curious also to hear in the comments below this, what are your sustainability tips? Because I just revealed a whole lot of personal information. I'm feeling a little vulnerable. I'd like some solidarity here, but I'm just hoping that these are helpful for you. And I'd also love to see what you have to share that are things maybe I haven't even thought of. So please leave a comment below and tell us what you know. All right, tip number five, toothpaste. This is another area where I really challenge you to consider your consumption. It takes me months, we're talking like four months to go through a tube this size by myself. But I see people putting toothpaste on their toothbrush when, you know, I've visited them, I have friends, I've seen them brush their teeth. Um, and they're like, like they're frosting some kind of cake and it's gotta be super decorative. You actually don't need that much toothpaste. You can find those little squeezers that help you squeeze every bit or you can roll the tube. So just make sure that you're not just squeezing from the middle, but you're actually utilizing all of the product that's in there. And if you really get down to the bare bones, you can chop this portion off here. And obviously you'd wanna leave the cap on and then squeeze it out that way too. The other related tip that is both very eco-friendly and will help your water budget is if you turn the water off while you're brushing your teeth. All right, those are my five easy ways to stretch your budget in beauty and lifestyle. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel so you know when new content's coming out and make sure you hit that little alarm button that's next to that red subscribe button so that you get a notification every time I've got something fantastic like this to share. And remember, sharing is caring. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the share button post it to your social media, or send it off to a friend who you think might benefit from this. I would love for you to join my newsletter where I share lots of healthy beauty tips, product suggestions, and inspiration as well. And if you're over 40, please come over to my Facebook group, Healthy Beauty Over 40, where we're uplifting the conversation of what it means to be beautiful and aging gracefully. Thank you so much for watching until the end. You'll find lots more resources on my website. I'll link to everything below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.